Alright, so welcome to the next installment in the Ear Laboratory series where we're building complete claw hammer arrangements from scratch. Um, so in this uh, video, I'm going to be taking us through the process of uh, building an arrangement for the song or the tune um, Old Molly Hair. And once again, um, these videos are an extension of the playing by uh, ear modules in the Breakthrough Banjo course. So if you haven't been through those yet, uh, modules uh, one through four, the uh, one on finding the chords, then finding the melody, then three and four on creating claw hammer arrangements from that, um, it's recommended that you do so and then kind of use these in, as an extension uh, to further develop uh, your ability to learn and play by ear. So once again, we're going to be covering an arrangement for the song Old Molly Hair, which is a classic fiddle tune. And uh, I know I've said before that it's uh, a good idea when you're first starting this process of, play, of learning and picking out tunes by ear to start with songs, uh, meaning uh, tunes with, mel with um, lyrics. Uh, but in this case, um, we actually have some lyrics to go on. So um, it's not that uncommon for there to actually be a set of words that uh, people tend to sing along with a fiddle tune. So these fiddle tunes started out their life as an instrumental, so uh, a tune just played on, with the notes on the fiddle, and then somewhere along the way, uh, people started adding in their own uh, lyrics for it. Now, there are probably several reasons why people did this. Um, one may just be that they were uh, moved by the music and they they wanted to sing along in some way and so uh, needed some words to help them do that. Uh, but I think another way is probably that uh, they were using the words as a memory device. Uh, so one of the very reasons why I recommend starting with songs when you're doing this sort of thing of learning to play by ear is that um, having words makes it a lot easier for us to remember uh, melodies. And so when you're going through this process of learning by ear, you're not simultaneously having to remember and retain the melody in your mind as you're kind of doing all the rest of the work of, of trying to figure it out on the banjo. Uh, so that's why it's good to start with songs. Um, but like I said, I think that it's probably true that folks who were using uh, words or making up words with fiddle tunes to help them remember the melody, since our brains are much uh, better at remembering songs. And I also point this out because um, if you do find it challenging to remember how instrumental tunes go, which some folks do, it can often be helpful just to make up uh, words of your own uh, to help you remember it by. I've done that myself before and it really is a, an effective uh, tool. One of the other parts of this tradition of adding lyrics to a fiddle tune is the use of what are called floating verses. So uh, these are uh, phrases that you might hear sung in multiple uh, different uh, tunes. So they're kind of like a, a Swiss army, army knife of lyrics, kind of a phrase that you can drop into a melody um, at will. So for example, the phrase, who's gonna shoe your pretty little foot? Uh, you'll hear crop up in multiple different songs and tunes or um, grasshopper sitting on a sweet tater vine. Um, there are lots of little floating verses like that. So you could uh, also keep a little library of those in your mind if you want to uh, use them when you're trying to remember an instrumental and you want to just insert some words. And who knows, if you make up your own words for a fiddle tune, uh, it might catch on and that can be part of your musical legacy. Now, I recently played Old Molly Hair as a, a Tune of the Week selection, and uh, in that uh, version, um, I played it a good bit slower than I probably would play it, or that you would hear it played uh, in a jam, so slower than a, than a fiddler would usually play it. And uh, I think it's a good idea to, to do that from time to time. Um, I find it helpful for multiple reasons um, to play a tune slow. So it's important to remember that uh, when you're playing on your own, uh, you have the freedom to play it as fast or as slow as you want. So don't feel like you have to be locked into the conventional tempo. Um, and there are several reasons why I think it's uh, beneficial to play through songs slow, even if that's not gonna be the speed at which you perform it at. When you're uh, playing it through a tune slowly, um, it's a lot easier to hear the, the nuances and the, and the different uh, things you might add in uh, to the spaces in a tune uh, versus when you're playing it so fast it's whizzing by and your brain can hardly uh, process it. Um, there are also maybe technical elements that at a fast pace you wouldn't attempt or they'd be too, uh, that would get your fingers too twisted up, um, but that at a slower pace you can do and uh, you wouldn't be tempted to try that unless you slow them down. Also, you may find that the uh, tune sounds 
uh, just as good, if not better, uh, slowed down. So uh, some songs uh, really take on a, a different character when they're played slow versus uh, when they're played fast. So it's kind of like getting two tunes for the price of one. Um, the other thing I should mention is that uh, you're free to choose the key you want to play it in. Uh, now, if you are playing a fiddle tune, um, it makes sense to make it so that you can adapt it in a jam situation. Uh, so, for example, I'm playing Old Molly Hair in the demonstration version and in this video um, out of double C tuning uh, because uh, I like getting that low C note. Um, but this is typically in a jam and as a fiddle tune known as a D tune, so you typically play it in the key of D. But all you have to do is capo up or tune up from double C to double D tuning in a jam to play it there. Now, as you may know, the first thing I recommend you do before you get started finding a, a tune by ear is to listen uh, to how it goes and make sure you have it firmly in mind. Um, and I've linked the version that I have uh, that I played as the tune of the week on this page if you want to go and, and click on that and listen to it a few times first. Or if you have another version or if you can find another version of Old of Molly Hair you want to, um, that's fine too. Just so long as you um, have the basic melody in your mind before we get started. And we'll be reviewing it right here as well. So for reasons that I've discussed before, um, I strongly recommend starting by finding the chord progression. This time I'm going to use the same uh, format that I use for the practice uh, video exercises in the Breakthrough Banjo course for finding the chords. So what you're going to see is that the uh, lyrics for this song are going to display as I'm uh, singing them, but uh, the lyrics themselves will be, will be color coded and each color corresponds to a different chord. So your job as you're listening to the um, to me play this and seeing the chord, uh, seeing the lyrics, is to figure out uh, which color corresponds to which chord. Now we're playing this song in the key of C, and it is often the case with so many of these traditional tunes. Your one, five, four, and five chords are the ones that are the main ones to look for. So once again in the key of C, that's that's your C major, your F major, which is your four chord, and your G major, which is your five chord. So those are the ones to search for uh, as I'm playing through this uh, song. So here I'm just going to start with singing the A part, and uh, you might want to pause the video after I'm done and see if you can pick out the chords for yourself uh, as I'm going to give you the answer after I finish. Oh my hair, what you doing there? Running through the road just as hard as you can dare. Well, oh my hair, what you doing there? Sitting on a butter dish picking out a hair. All right, so here are the chords for that A part, and like most songs, we're starting on the root chord, which is our C major. Oh my hair, switching to the F, what you doing there? Back to the C, running through the road, and to the G, just as hard as you can, back to the C, tear. Once again, well, oh my hair, what you doing there? Next part basically just duplicates that same thing. Well, oh my hair, what you doing there? Sitting on a butter dish, picking out a hair. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is try to find the melody notes. Now here, I'm going to play just the melody notes, the words, that, the, the, the notes that I just sang on the banjo. And as I do, you're going to see a diagram uh, presented. And the orange dots are the only positions on the fretboard where, you're, uh, where you'll find the melody notes. So I've narrowed down the choices to just those positions. And your job is to see if you can find where the melody notes are on the banjo. Again, after I play through the melody, you may want to pause it and try to figure it out for yourself, because I'll give you the answer afterwards.
So again, that melody is basically just the same phrase repeated twice. Okay, now that we have the structural foundation for our A part, let's build a claw hammer arrangement for it. So if we take that first measure, there's a little bit of space in there that we can fill in with other stuff on the banjo, right? As we've talked about before, we can think of each of these measures as having sort of eight spaces where we could put a note in your sort of prototypical uh, uh, fiddle tune. So you have a downbeat, an offbeat, an upbeat, an offbeat, and that repeats again to give you the full measure. So you have eight spaces. So in this first measure, we filled up four of our spots, right? We have a note on our first downbeat, our first upbeat, our, our second downbeat, and the, fir and the offbeat that follows it. So now we have those extra spaces if we want to use them with other stuff on the banjo. So here's a simple thing we might do to fill up some of that other, uh, some of the other space that's available. And with that first half of the measure, we've kind of created a bum ditty rhythm. With that second half, we filled up all of the spaces, so you might call that a bump a ditty rhythm. Bum ditty bump a ditty. Now in our second measure, we have the same exact melodic shape. Same structure, same notes are filled in. So we could do the exact same thing that we just did. Again, bum ditty bump a ditty. And then our third measure. So here we have a note on all of the downbeats and all of the upbeats, but the offbeats are empty. So if we fill in uh, the offbeats that are occurring after the notes on the upbeats, we'll again get a bum ditty rhythm like this. Bum, bum. And our fourth measure uh, goes like this. First three of our eight spaces are filled up there if we want to hit them, and the uh, as is our fifth space. And then after that, we have empty. Uh, we have the rest of the measure empty. Um, so if we actually wanted to play all of those first three notes, we need to do something to grab this uh, open second string. So. Typically, you do that with a drop thumb. Um, the other way you could do it would be with a pull-off. So you're basically there doing an alternate string pull-off, first striking the first string, and then pulling off the second string, and then going to the third string, fourth fret. So that's one way if you don't want to do it with a drop thumb. Another alternative would be to um, syncopate that, uh, that note, the fourth uh, fret of the third string. So instead of playing it in our third position, we shift it to the second position uh, here by playing it as an alternate string hammer-on like this. So instead of coming in our third position, we're anticipating it and, and playing it early. And then what we could do is follow that with a strum thumb like this. And note there that because we're on our G chord, um, I'm fretting this uh, second string at the second fret to, to make it sound har harmonious uh, with the chord of the moment. So if you wanted to avoid uh, doing an alternate string pull-off there or the drop thumb, that's another option. You're just syncopating that melody note. Another thing you could do to just keep it simple would be to just not include that second note at all. You don't have to play all the notes of the melody. In fact, that's one of the neat things about being a banjo player is that you're free to kind of do what you want. You can dance around the melody um, as long as you're keeping good time and good rhythm and uh, staying, staying within the harmonic structure. You have a bit more flexibility than a fiddle player would. So here's what we could do if we just drop that note altogether. And again, I'm filling that last uh, space, the seventh and eighth slots in our measure, with, uh, with, a bump, with a strum thumb. So now let's see what we've got with those first four measures. Now 
guess what? We just do that again and that completes our A part. So the full A part would go like this. So for our next version, let's just see if now we can uh, try to fill every available space uh, in our melodies. So again, we can think of each of these measures as sort of these recurring two beats, and within each beat we, beat we have four spaces. So we have kind of eight spaces in each measure we can fill. And if we fill all of those spaces, uh, then we create this bump a ditty rhythm. Now remember too that um, in this structure, right, like I said, we have downbeat, the upbeats, and then the offbeats in between. And the down and up beats are typically the domain of our uh, frilling or picking finger, and the off beats can be either generated by the thumb on any string, including the fifth, um, and when it's not on the fifth, we refer to that as a drop thumb, or with our fretting hand, either as a pull off or a hammer on. So what that means is that when we're trying to fill in these spaces, uh, if we're filling in a space on the off beat, we have the choice of either using our uh, thumb or one of the fingers of our fretting hand with a fretting uh, hand maneuver. So now let's take our first measure again and fill in all the spaces. I'm going to fill in the uh, second space that we uh, didn't fill last time with a drop thumb. Uh, so it'll sound like this. All right, now we can do that same exact thing, thing again, filling that second space with a drop thumb like this. And I should note here that uh, this strum is over an F chord, right? We, we decided that this point in the song, it's an F chord. I'm not fingering that full chord, and that's because leaving it open actually doesn't sound bad. So that I kind of like the sound of that. You could finger it, which gives it a little bit more major sound, but I kind of like to give it a little more melancholy sound that way. So I like keeping it open there, and it actually makes it easier. Now to keep things simple, we can kind of do the same thing. So here we have uh, essentially the second and the fifth space uh, in this measure to fill, and we can do that again with just a drop thumb onto the second string. So that'll sound like this. All right, and then for our uh, last measure, uh, again, those first uh, three notes are spoken for as part of the melody, um, and then what we'll do is fill in that fifth note with a drop thumb uh, for the from on this string below, which is going to be the open third. So that'll sound like this. Now, in the version that I played for the tune of the week, I did something a little bit different there. Um, so for those last two measures, I played this. Again, I filled in all the spaces, but the melody of that was a little bit different, and that's just a variation you might sometimes hear uh, people play with this song. And then once again, the uh, that part just repeats itself, so our entire uh, A part sounds like this. Now again, I'm filling all these spaces for the sake of demonstration. You could do that, of course. You could uh, keep all those spaces filled, or you could drop some of them out. But this just shows you kind of the range of possibilities and helps you to think of this in terms of uh, your skeletal uh, architecture that you've built, which is your melody notes and your chord structure, and then the spaces that you have in between uh, that you can fill or not fill, and the tools that you have to do so. And the choices you make in doing all that is going to shape how, what your final version sounds like.